Hello my friends, today in how to paint series I would like to show you some painting and weathering on wheels, but not on wheels from tracked vehicles, but on wheels with tires. For this purpose I will use 5 wheels from Boxer Model from Revel, which I will paint in 5 different ways. Don't pay attention to the quality of these wheels and tires because they are for presentation only. Basic painting will be done with Mission Model paints. At first the primer, but before I start painting I will quickly drill holes for toothpicks to conveniently hold each wheel during work. I put the primer on all wheels and let it dry. After several minutes I start painting the rims. They will be in NATO green, but I will lighten them a bit to make a greater contrast between the color of the rim and the color of the tire. In addition I paint the screws silver to make a little cool effect. It doesn't take much time and I have to admit that any extra effect on the wheels add a cool and unique look to them. Some small inscriptions, stamps, stripes, all this builds interest. Here are examples of wheels from real vehicles. Because I don't use any ready-made masks, I divided the tire painting into two parts. Near the rims I painted a piece of tire with two layers of color but using a brush. After masking with a piece of blue tack I painted the rest with airbrush. Of course you can also do it without masking mass if you are sure that you won't paint the previously made rim. Ok, before I paint the wheels a bit of wheel philosophy. Interesting looking wheels are undoubtedly an important element of any model, especially a wheeled vehicle. That's why it's so important to build the right interest on this part of our model using even the smallest effects which will catch the viewer's attention and make him stop at our work longer. Of course it's worth watching and analyzing photos of real vehicles because often what you see in reality is very surprising. More than once I have seen strange looking configurations of three dry wheels and one wet in one line, one side muddy and the other clean, smaller or larger oil spills or plant remains stuck to the tires. All such trifles can make the model look even more realistic and our work will bring us satisfaction. Contrary to appearances, working on wheels can take us quite a long time. This of course depends on several factors such as experience, products use or intended purpose. However, regardless of how much time we spend on them, it will be the time needed and necessary at the given moment to achieve the desired effect. An hour, two or the whole evening spent doesn't really matter, fun and effect are the most important. Ok, that's all, let's back to work. The first layer of dust, let's call it pre-dusting, it's a thin layer of sandy color that will serve as a base for further weathering work. So for now I have all wheels ready for weathering. When we want to have a dry wheel, the easiest way is to fill it with pigment and fix it. It may be close to the original, but it certainly won't be interesting. Therefore, here I propose an alternative to the pigment, which is an oil paint. With the mixture with thinner we make a wash around the whole wheel. After drying with the accelerator we start applying oil paint straight from the tube. We need small amounts around the rim which we distribute in an irregular way. You can make small stains as I did here, but also spread the paint at your discretion. We build the effect so that it fits our intentions. It's better to work with small amounts of paint because it's easier to control. This effect will look best on the side walls of the tire.
In this way we can lift the tire if we plan to set the model on a sandy surface. But if we plan to set it on asphalt, the treat blocks are worth repainting. This is what I did in a very simple and effective way. A cotton bud soaked in acrylic paint does the job, but you can also do it with oil paint. Finally, it's worth improving the wash between the treat blocks. If the dust effect is too weak, add some pigment to the wash and apply this mixture exactly to the tire grooves to build up more of the dust. For this weathering finish, the previous dust on the treat must be painted in the color of the tire. After that I applied a sand pigment to the sides of the tire, which I rubbed gently with my finger. This is a dust effect base. I will be applying dry thick mud to the edges of the rim, so I'm preparing a mixture of pigment cement and a bit of powder. I'm applying it in small amounts on the rim. After a few minutes it's already firmly glued, so there is no way it will fall off. I start to paint wet surfaces with glossy varnish. It's worth observing what real tires look like, however the best effect will be achieved when the tire is not completely wet, but will have dry parts. Fine thin lines are also indicated as water splashes. The treat of course should be painted with varnish in its entirety. Just like with the first tire we make heavy wash with the oil paint. Before the thinner is dry we apply the pigment thoroughly covering the whole tire paying particular attention to the treat. We carefully drive the pigment into it. We do the same at the edge of the connection between the rim and the tire. We wipe the tire in the places where the rubber needs to be visible and I'm talking about the treat and on the side edges and start fixing the pigment with the wash that we applied earlier. Drying with the accelerator definitely speeds up the whole work and you can immediately see what effect we get. Fresh mud is mixed with the pigment to obtain a mud in which the texture will be visible. You need to check what proportions will be the best. It's important that it's not too thin or we will lose the effect. Too thick will be difficult to apply. Irregular spots in the groove near the rim and possibly on the sides of the tire in the treat will be the best solution. If you have the opportunity, join to my Patreon because your support is highly appreciated and helps me do what I do here at Coldemons PL. 
Thanks to this I will try to give you some interesting content to keep you informed and entertained. And as always I would like to say thank you to all my patrons who support my work. You are great guys. Please join them if you can. A mixture of oil paint and thinner with the addition of pigment was applied to the entire wheel and dried with an accelerator. I gently remove the excess from the flat edges of the tire using a brush. After removing the pigment with air from the accelerator I soak the dried surfaces with white spirit and dry it again. In this way I increased its adhesion to the paint layer. I gently rubbed it with my finger and started to apply fine splashes of mud. I mixed a bit of fresh mud with previously used mixture. I did this a few times to build a good looking effect. Fresh mud without any additives was applied around the wheel on the edge of the treat and side walls of the tire. It will be a transitional effect between dry surface and snow. And just for its preparation it's worth using any product that after drying will stick between the treat blocks. I used snow micro balloons and pigment cement. I ran out of other products so I used what I still had in my stash. We put snow on the treat of the wheel and then wipe off the excess with your fingers so that the treat blocks are visible. This is quite enough to show the wheel that rolled over the snow. Today I've got some extra book for you with perfect ideas to build an interesting model. All you need to do is subscribe to the channel, like this video and try the comment called Demons PL. As always, I will let you know who is the lucky winner on Monday. Good luck! Using this set I will prepare a wheel with heavy mud. I mix dark mud with a bit of oil paint, add a few drops of the thinner and add the pigment to form a mud with a bit of texture. I put it on the whole tire and gently wipe with the cotton but creating a delicate structure on the entire surface. After drying the result is much more visible. I put dark mud on the treat exactly the same as in the previous example with snow. I try to push it between the blocks. Also a bit on the sidewalls of the tire to make it look like the vehicle has sunk into the soft ground a bit.
You can leave it at this stage if needed, but I decided to wipe the treat to show the blocks. I did it a little too hard and that's why I have to paint them a little bit. But first I added more splashes of mud to complete the whole look. And after that I could paint again the treat blocks. In addition thin lines on the sides will complement the splashes I made a few moments ago. The glossy varnish simulates the wet surface of fresh mud. A little bit on the edges will also add realism. Ok, so here are the results of the work in one picture. I hope this episode will be useful, so please let me know in the comment. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!